let's assume that climate change is happening and that human caused carbon dioxide emissions are playing a role in that climate change for the purposes of the beginning of this discussion. And let's assume that carbon dioxide is a powerful or a, an important greenhouse grass to consider in the climate changing of the earth. This is the mainstream perspective on climate change. Human caused CO2 emissions from a variety of sources, not just cows, industry, et cetera, electricity. Most people would point to cows as a problem. Very few people understand that agriculture for plants also has a contribution to CO2. So I'll get into that in a moment. But let's assume that I'm taking the mainstream overall paradigm belief at the beginning of this podcast and saying, okay, climate change is happening. Human caused carbon dioxide is contributing to that. And number three, or the same number two, essentially, carbon dioxide can only be contributing to that if it is actually a potent greenhouse gas that will change the temperature and the radiance of energy from the earth to outer space. So we must make those assumptions in the beginning. As I said, at the end of this podcast, I will show you something that may challenge your assumptions on those beliefs. Maybe you'll stay in the 97% who don't choose to challenge your beliefs, or maybe you'll actually think outside the box. Who knows? I'm not a physicist. And as you'll see, this thing I'm going to show you at the end is interesting physics from Max Planck and others. So we'll see what it ends up at. But at the beginning of this conversation, I want to start with those assumptions. So the party line for these people who will comment on my Instagram and say, we know that red meat is causing climate change, is essentially the notion that cows fart. Actually, it's a burp. They fart out, they burp out methane. All ruminants do. A bison does, a deer does, an antelope does. And there are many things that contribute methane to the environment in outside of, you know, between the earth and space. And that is important because methane is a greenhouse gas. Now, one thing to consider from the very beginning of this podcast is that without greenhouse gases, the surface of the earth would always be around the freezing temperature of water or perhaps colder. So we need some greenhouse gases. And there are multiple greenhouse gases besides methane. There's carbon dioxide, there's nitrogen. Water is a greenhouse gas, meaning it has some sort of an insulating effect. Again, at the end of this podcast, I will show you some very interesting physics that suggest that actually point to perhaps the true greenhouse gas nature of carbon dioxide. But for purposes of this current discussion, let's assume that carbon dioxide is having a significant effect and that increasing carbon dioxide levels in parts per million, which we know has been happening recently from 285 parts per million to around 415 plus parts per million over the last 50 to 60 years. That's very difficult to debate in the Earth's atmosphere. That's been happening. We can see the Keeling curve from Scripps Institute in San Diego, that that carbon dioxide has some sort of a greenhouse gas effect. So let's look at the actual amount of carbon dioxide equivalents that cows represent relative to other contributors in the United States. I think we begin the conversation with the United States, then we can expand the conversation to the world. But if we're going to say if cows are contributing to climate change, let's start at home in the United States and understand what we can control in terms of US policies. Presumably, we can't control how China raises their cattle or how China controls their carbon dioxide emissions. We can't control what Greenland or Iceland or Australia or New Zealand does. Those are not even our countries. So let's start at home in the United States and understand what our actual relative contributions are from various sources. In order to do that, I will use a graphic from my book, The Carnivore Code. But as you see here at the bottom, this is from the US Environmental Protection Agency. You can find this. This is a 2016 report on an inventory of US greenhouse gas emissions and sinks. Uh, and you can find that all here if you don't believe the reference. So here is the relative contributions. And this is um, total US greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Now, Electricity generation responsible for 30.3% of greenhouse gas, GHG emissions. Transportation, another 26.4. Industry, 21.3. So clearly, the biggest three contributors that are anthropogenic human caused, because I'll show you the carbon cycle in a moment, and you'll see that the earth is actually cycling many of these greenhouse gases. But the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions in the United States or industry, electricity generation, et cetera, transportation, which probably includes cars, but also planes, and electricity generation, massive. Add commercial and residential, and you have 
essentially more than 90% of US greenhouse gas emissions, and you haven't even gotten to agriculture or livestock yet. Agricultural crops, this is plant-based agriculture, which is the supposed alternative to red meat, is 5.2% or was 5.2% according to this EPA report. And then livestock was 3.7%, the lowest contribution. And of that 3.7%, beef was 1.9%. Tell me again how red meat is causing climate change when there are 1.9% of US greenhouse gas emissions in, according to this EPA report. Okay, so that nobody is debating that cows burp methane, but how much methane relative to other sources. And it should be noted that in this graphic, this methane is converted to carbon dioxide equivalents or greenhouse gas equivalents because methane eventually becomes carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But if you look at that, it's important to understand the relative contribution of ruminants in the United States from an EPA report. And it's important to understand that contribution is small relative to industry, electricity generation, and transportation. Okay. So if we wiped out all cattle on the planet, they would produce less greenhouse gases. Let's start in the United States, excuse me. If we wiped out all cattle from the United States, they would produce less greenhouse gases. But presumably we'd need more calories that would be nutrient poor calories to feed people. And we would have to increase the agriculture. So there is really no magical math that can happen here. You can wipe out all of these cows from the United States that will reduce this 1.9%. But presumably that's going to go over here to the agricultural crops, which also produce greenhouse gases or into these other pigs, chickens, et cetera, these other things, which we're going to feed people. So where is the magical math that these red meat haters would suggest will magically solve our climate problems. The other thing to consider is that the tilling of land reduces carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So if you are going to raise more crops in a monocrop agriculture manner, not only are you going to destroy ecosystems where those crops are grown, you are going to release more carbon dioxide from the earth into the atmosphere. So red meat causes climate change in the same way that your broccoli causes climate change. There is no way out of this. We need to feed humans, unless this person is part of an anti-human cult that believes we should all just commit ritual suicide and remove ourselves from the planet. I think there's a much better way to move forward when we look at the relative contributions of that carbon dioxide. 